The video game industry is a tough business. Game developers spend years upon years developing fantastic new games for us to enjoy and they vary in success and sometimes get a sequel and sometimes don't. And what I want to talk about in this particular video are seven different video games that I would personally love to see a sequel to or a new edition of because in a couple of cases on this list there are actually games that have received sequels but then didn't receive any other games in the series post that that I do feel like deserve another chance in the spotlight. So make sure you leave your own personal list in the comment section down below. Which video games would you like to see a sequel to? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And with all that said, let's jump in to the list. Starting off, I would love to see a sequel to 2013's Sleeping Dogs. This game was an action-adventure crime game that was developed by United Front Games and published by Square Enix. And this game, honestly, was fantastic. It was so interesting, so different and fresh to every other open-world crime game in the universe at that time. And I felt that it was just such a breath of fresh air for this industry. Sleeping Dogs was not only a really exciting and fun crime game, but also an innovative one. Uh, uh, with a very fleshed out, very competent fighting system and combat system that very much rivaled the likes of the Arkham series from Rocksteady. The fighting was was brutal, it was fierce. You use Kung Fu and many other martial arts as a way of defeating your enemies in the game and it was just so well fleshed out and very exciting. And what I absolutely loved about the game was the setting. The game takes place inside of Hong Kong in China and that's just a setting we don't see in games, especially games of this type. Like open world crime games are very much America centric for the most part and unlike its fairly contemporaries like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row and Watch Dogs, it just felt so different. It had its own distinct personality and its own vibe because of the Asian setting. It was just so different to everything else we had seen. And again, it just made Sleeping Dogs feel very much like its own thing and very unique. Mix that with its very fleshed out combat system. It's very fun and arcadey driving. And also it's incredibly fun and over the top combat and shooting sequences that rival the likes of John Woo movies. It was just a really exciting, fresh and innovative game for the industry and a true standout among the open world crime genre. Now there was actually a sequel to Sleeping Dogs originally in development from United Front Games, however it was seemingly cancelled for unknown reasons, so we're not quite sure what that reason was. I mean the game was very well received, it seemed to have done okay financially, so we're not quite sure exactly why a sequel to Sleeping Dogs never actually happened, but all I'm saying is I don't think it's too late. I think there's definitely room for a sequel for this game, and I personally, and I think many others along with me, would love to see it. Next up, I want to talk about Titanfall 3. Now, of course, this is actually a third game. This would be the third game in the Titanfall series. But the reason why I'm putting this here on this list is because, for one, not only do I feel like the Titanfall series deserves another entry, but also because Titanfall 2 was the first game in the series that had a single-player campaign. The first Titanfall game was multiplayer exclusive. Titanfall 2 as far as the campaign and the story is concerned, is kind of Titanfall 1, if that makes sense. So I think that Titanfall 3 would actually be a sequel to Titanfall 2. It, it's kind of weird, but you, you get what I mean. Uh, Titanfall 3, I just think it deserves it. You know, I think Respawn, they developed such a great gameplay system with the Titanfall series that has gone on to create Apex Legends, which has become one of the biggest free-to-play battle royale games in the world currently. And I think the Titanfall kind of got left by the wayside. I mean, the first game released exclusively on the Xbox One, and it wasn't exactly the biggest success they had hoped. Titanfall was kind of pitched as being the big main exclusive for the Xbox One at the time, but then it got delayed a couple times, and it just kind of, by the time it eventually came out, the Xbox One had already been out for a few months, and the excitement for the game had kind of dwindled. And then when Titanfall 2 finally came around, people just didn't really care. And it was such a shame because I replayed Titanfall 2 very, very recently and I had the biggest just smile on my face throughout the entire time playing it. It's so fun, incredibly unique and exciting to play. The movement system is pretty much unlike any other in the first person shooter genre. We had seen other games in this genre like Call of Duty do the advanced movement and stuff like that, but nobody made it as smooth and fluid and intuitive as Respawn did 
in Titanfall 2. It was just so exciting to use. And the Titans also rivaled the amount of fun you had as a pilot. You know, you have these two distinct gameplay modes where you can run around as a pilot, you have all these advanced movements, you can shoot guns, and the guns are all incredibly unique and fun to use. And then you also have the Titans, which are just these big, monolithic beasts on the battlefield that you can enter into and just wreck shop. And it's just such a great gameplay mechanic that you can always rely on and always get into. And for me, I just think Titanfall 2, that campaign, yeah, it was simple, but it works, you know, it's very charming, I had a great time with it, and I would love to see a continuation of it, and I think Titanfall 3, you know, I think that that is something that should happen at some point in the future. We know that Respawn obviously have gone on to develop Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, which I thought was a great game, and we know they are currently in development of, for a sequel for that game. But I think once that Jedi Fallen Order receives its sequel, I think Respawn should take another look at the Titanfall series and give us a third entry into this underrated series. Next up, I would love to see Star Wars The Force Unleashed 3. Uh, this also, similarly to Sleeping Dogs, did actually have a sequel in development at one point, but following the acquisition of Lucasfilm by Disney, the game was seemingly cancelled, uh, sort of unbeknownst to the world, because we didn't really know about this sequel happening until after it was sort of seemingly cancelled. Uh, but Star Wars The Force Unleashed was a really fantastic series of Star Wars games on the PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, and the PC. And it was just one of those games that really helped you feel the Force. And that's kind of what the game was all about. When the first game released, it was all advertised as the best way to experience the Force yet. And it really delivered on that promise. You know, the way you were playing as Starkiller or Galen Marrick, played by the incredible Sam Witwer, he was just so powerful, his character was so cool as well, he was Darth Vader's secret apprentice, and he was just this badass, super powerful character, and you were able to embrace all those force powers that we know and love from the Star Wars films. You were able to force push, and you could also use lightning as well, and you can throw your lightsaber about, your lightsaber combat was fantastic. It was just one of those games that really allowed you to get invested in the Star Wars universe. It also had a great story. You're playing as Darth Vader's secret apprentice going around and hunting Jedi following the events of Episode 3 after Order 66. You are going around hunting the remaining Jedi who are still out in the world. And I thought that was really, really cool because you are essentially Darth Vader's weapon. And I thought that was such a great concept. And unfortunately, the game seemingly ended with the second game in the series, The Force Unleashed 2, which wasn't quite as well received as the first game was, but I think a lot of people still had a lot of fun with it. And I think, unfortunately, we could have experienced a whole new chapter with The Force Unleashed 3 that could have really gone in any direction. And I think that Star Wars The Force Unleashed 3 had a lot of potential. They really could have brought back a lot of awesome characters for it. It could have tied into a lot of cool stuff. But unfortunately, it seems like that game will probably never happen given the new direction of the Star Wars franchise. Next up, I would love to see a full-fledged sequel to Mod Nation Races from the PlayStation 3. Now, some of you may not know what this game is, some of you may. Uh, this was a PlayStation 3 exclusive racer that I really loved. It was just one of those games that I got very early on when I got my PS3 back in 2010, and I just really fell for this game. It's basically a combination of Little Big Planet and Mario Kart where you have your own customized racer, your own customized cars, and also you can customize and create your very own racetracks. And it was just a game that was full of creativity, full of personality, and just so different to every other kart racer out there. Because yeah, sure, we've had customization before, we've had kart racers before, but never had a game blended the two in such a seamless way and in such a expansive way. It was one of those games that felt very unique to the PlayStation brand and definitely one that I feel like should have been given more of a chance uh, because it didn't really feel like it did much uh, as far as the PlayStation audience were concerned. Now, it did actually get a sequel technically on the PlayStation Vita, which was uh, Mod Nation Racers Road Trip, which I did have and I did play when I had my PlayStation Vita. And it was good, but it was basically just a port of the PS3 game to the Vita, but it did have a slightly different story, but for the most part, it was the same game. I would love to see a full-fledged Mod Nation Racers sequel on PS5, uh, fully embracing the power of the new console to create these incredible worlds. Like, imagine what we could do with a new Little Big Planet game as well, with the new power of PS5, and I feel like Mod Nation Racers could really demonstrate that. We've seen what Media Molecule have been able to do with Dreams. I feel like with all that power that they have, you know, and what they were able to do with that on PS4 alone, 
could really reflect well on Modern Asian Racers. I know they didn't develop Modern Asian Racers, but the developer who did develop it, who name is escaping me from the top of my head right now, they could do so much more with this. And, you know, I do feel like, unfortunately, the time for this game has passed. I do feel like it was a attempt at a new franchise for PlayStation that didn't quite take off. But if they ever wanted to come back to it, I would be more than happy for it. And sticking with PlayStation, I would also love to see a sequel to PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale. Now, this is definitely a controversial game when it comes to PlayStation fans. Uh, this game came out in 2012, which is often considered a rough year for the PlayStation brand, given everything that happened in that year. And while I do agree with that to a certain extent, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, I actually think gets a bit of a bad rap. I think that this game was actually pretty good, pretty damn fun, and yeah, sure, it's a little bizarre, but for me personally, I don't see it any more as bizarre as Super Smash Bros. for Nintendo systems, and that's obviously what this game was trying to emulate. Now, while this game is very much a rip-off, if you will, of Smash Bros., and was very much PlayStation going after that similar concept, it doesn't change the fact that this game was still very well made, kind of different, and also very fun. This obviously takes all the big PlayStation mascots from across all different generations, from the likes of Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, Uncharted, just so many fantastic series, even some earlier PlayStation 1 titles like Parappa the Rapper made it into there, and Sly Cooper, Fat Princess, Sir Daniel, just so many iconic PlayStation characters made it into this game, and they were all there on screen together fighting one another in iconic video game stages. And that's what was really cool as well. The stages in the game weren't exactly just PlayStation stages, they were also, um, you know, from other games as well. Like I remember you could fight in Colombia from Bioshock Infinite and many, many more. Now, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale was definitely not the success PlayStation intended it to be. I think they put a lot of stock in this game and they really hoped that people were going to take to it in the same way that Nintendo fans take to Smash Brothers and get so hyped about Smash Brothers every single time there's a new game in the series. PlayStation All-Stars never quite got that same level of love, adoration, and success. And I think that is a shame, because while the game can kind of feel like a second-rate Smash Brothers, I do feel like the game had a lot of charm. And again, it worked in a different way to Smash Brothers. Unlike Smash Brothers, which you just have to keep hitting each other until you reach that top meter and everyone can get uh, knocked out and stuff like that, PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale focused on building up a super meter which you could then exploit to bring in the superpower that you would have, like the special move, and only then using that special move could you take out another player. So it was quite unique in that way. It had its own little gameplay mechanic that separated it from other fighting games at the time. And I feel like that that was quite distinctive and really could have been built upon in future installments of the franchise. Also, if you look at the PlayStation brand now to what it was back then, it's very different and it's grown and expanded in quite a large way. We have so many new and iconic mascots from the last 10 years that didn't make it into that original PlayStation All-Stars because it came out before. But now you could put in the new version of Kratos, you could put in Aloy from Horizon Zero Dawn, the Hunter from Bloodborne, and also potentially a Last of Us character as well. Um, you know, there's just so many you could put in there that you know weren't able to be in the first game, but it just shows how diverse and fantastic the PlayStation brand is, that you have all these mascots that have just come up in the last few years. And I feel like the PlayStation also Battle Royale, if it came out today, given how popular Smash Brothers is again at the moment with you know Smash Brothers Ultimate on Switch, I think that there is a market for this game, and I think people on PlayStation could really appreciate this game in today's day and age. And just one more PlayStation game and then we're moving on. Uh, the next game I would absolutely love to see a sequel to is The Order 1886. Now this game is one that's very close to my heart and I absolutely adore this game. I always have done. And I feel like this game just got so... Just bombarded with bad reviews for literally no reason. The Order 1886 was a fantastic and great game that nobody seemed to appreciate. This was a big PlayStation 4 exclusive that came out very early on in 2015, and it was built up from E3. I remember at the E3 2013 Sony showcase, they first revealed this game, and it was kind of built up as one of the big PlayStation 4 exclusives, one of the first original ones, and it was in a way. Um, but this game came out, and it just got bombarded with bad reviews because people thought, well, it's not really any longer than six hours, so therefore it's a waste of time. And that just isn't true. Um, I've said this many times in these videos before, but I do not personally care about game length. I could not give a rat's ass. I think that game length doesn't matter. 
as long as the game delivers a great experience, that's all I care about. And I understand from the point of view that people don't want to spend a lot of money on a brand new game, you know, when it's only short. And sure, but that's and that's the problem with, you know, game publishers and the gaming industry as a whole is, you know, how expensive games are and, you know, how expensive the game development process is. But, you know, that's not to do with the game itself or the developers. And, you know, I think that the Order 1886 was unfortunately shafted from the PlayStation brand and the PlayStation community so quickly because of this short game length and people didn't really pay enough attention. This game was a fantastic third person shooter that graphically was stunning at the time. It was one of the best looking games we had seen maybe ever. It was just so beautiful looking and so crisp and realistic. It also had a great concept, this idea of this sort of secret almost underground police force known as the Order who were kind of you know, the, the new interpretation of the Knights of the Round Table who protect London from supernatural threats. And the gameplay was absolutely solid, the characters were great, the story was fun to follow along with, it was just a world that you could get lost in, and a world that could have easily been developed upon. And I feel like had this game achieved a similar success to other big PlayStation exclusives today, such as God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn and The Last of Us and Uncharted, we would have seen many more additions to this series. But unfortunately, because the game was just completely abandoned at the door because of its short game length, Ready at Dawn were unfortunately forced to move away from PlayStation and forced to go and experience other endeavours. Now, thankfully for the studio Ready at Dawn, they have gone on to great success. They have won many Game of the Year awards uh, for smaller indie titles that they've developed. But the Order 1886, I really hope that one day Sony gets back in touch with them and says, hey, let's give this another go, because it totally deserves it. And there's a lot of fans for this game. There are a lot of people who really love this game and would love to see it continue. And I, for one, am very much a part of that club. But the main game I would love to see a sequel to is absolutely, easily, no doubt, no questions asked, Rockstar's L.A. Noire. This game is phenomenal. And, you know, I don't want to say too much about this game, to be honest, because I am currently working on a video where I'm just talking about everything I love about this game. Like, I'm making a whole video on L.A. Noir. But L.A. Noir is just so underrated, so un underappreciated, and nobody talks about this game in the same way that they do other Rockstar titles. Now, this game wasn't exclusively developed by Rockstar. It was actually mainly developed by Australian team Team Bondi who were supposedly going to become Rockstar Melbourne, but that didn't end up happening, and that studio unfortunately is shut down now. But um, Rockstar still retained the rights to L.A. Noire as a franchise and as a game. L.A. Noire came out in 2011 and completely stole my heart. I just love this game. I think it's so beautiful. I think it was so ahead of its time. The technology used in the game was unlike anything else we had ever seen before at that point, and the way it was utilized within the game made it such a unique experience. There is no other game like L.A. Noire. There wasn't at that point, and there still hasn't been to this day. L.A. Noire is such a unique gameplay experience because while it still has its Rockstar foundations, it is an open world game. There is uh, driving and action driving and shootouts and stuff like that. There are those things that you would see in Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption. They're still in the game. The main core gameplay of L.A. Noire is so unlike any other Rockstar game, it has a completely different identity. The way that you scour crime scenes, investigate witnesses, question witnesses, interview people, and go over evidence is just such a unique gameplay loop that I just fell for. And to be honest, it's just a game that I feel like nobody spoke about enough at the time to really say, hey, this was a revolutionary title and you know it just didn't get the same love and attention and isn't as remembered as fondly as some of Rockstar's other titles and I think that's just such a shame I don't think people have I don't think enough people have really looked at this game to say hey what an experience this was even though for some people this game doesn't work and I get that you know the game is very long it's quite slow paced I get that but the appreciation for this game, I don't think is enough. You know, what this game did for the industry, what this game could have provided had we gotten more entries into the series. And, you know, what's the possibility of L.A. Noire getting a sequel? Honestly, I don't know. And if we never got a sequel, I, I, will, I will rest easily in my bed, you know, if, if this game never gets a sequel. Because the story of the first game is completely wrapped up within the first game itself. You know, it's a very long game, it takes a long time to tell its story, but it gets there at the end. And, you know, you can't really do a direct sequel to L.A. Noire, but 
I would love to see something, you know? I would love to see them just do something with it, um, with this franchise. And Rockstar, as I said, they retain the rights. Even though Team Bondi no longer exist, Rockstar still own the rights to the franchise. And with them releasing the L.A. Noir remaster back in 2017, I feel like that was them maybe dipping their toes in the water just to see the interest, you know? Just to see if people really were interested in L.A. Noir still in 2017 and to see if people were interested in more of that franchise. And I feel like that people were interested. I do feel like people were interested to see, you know, how that remaster played out and also how this franchise could continue in the future. And for me personally, I may be the biggest L.A. Noir fan on the planet, but I just adore this game and I would love to see so much more of it. You know, I would take this over GTA 6 and Red Dead Redemption 3 any day of the week. I would take this over Bully 2, absolutely. Uh, L.A. Noir is just such a special game for me. It's one of my all-time favorite games. You know, if Uncharted didn't exist, like if the Uncharted series didn't exist, L.A. Noir would be my favorite game of all time. That That's how much I'm, I love it. That's how much it means to me. I've played it so many times, and it just never gets old to me. I think it's so unique, so special, underappreciated, and truly one of the greatest games to ever hit the video game market in history. So there you have it guys, there's seven games that I personally would love to see a sequel to. As I said, make sure you leave your own list in the comment section down below. Which video games would you love to see a sequel of if you were able to make them personally? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And as always, if you want to see more movie content, TV content and gaming content like this, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any uploads from me. And I hope to see you guys again next time.